Hello, my fellow scientists. Welcome back to another episode of Science is Everywhere, the home edition. My name is Marie Lankin, and I'm with the Children's Discovery Museum of San Jose, and we are finishing up our week-long activities with fun with colors. So what are we doing today? We are talking about after images and how colors and your eyes work together. So this is a little different with this experiment because we're going to have three different parts of it. So the first part we're going to do in just a second, and then we'll come back and talk about that. And then we'll actually get into part of the experiment that I would really love for you to do with me at home. It's the best way to do this. So let's jump right in there and start with our first part of this experiment. I'll let the other Marie take it away. So, for our first experiment, we're going to use this circle that you see on the left, as well as this just blank area on the right. So on the left, you should see a circle split up into thirds, for those math fans out there. You should see those thirds being blue, red, and green. Now on the blank side, it is blank, which means that there's nothing there. <laughs> but that's probably not gonna stay that way. So here's how we're going to do this part of the experiment. What I'd like you to do is find the middle of that circle where those three colors are touching. And when I give the signal, I need you to look at that circle and the best you can, try not to blink and that's kind of the hard part so you may want to blink real fast before we start uh, just to kind of rest your eyes if you do blink that's not that's not that big a deal this will still work once 30 seconds are over i'm gonna have you look at that blank space and see if something changes now in order to do this i don't want you guys to have to worry about 30 seconds and finding a clock or finding a timer so i'm just going to count out loud so you can go ahead and hear the numbers and know when it's about time to switch and see what we see what may change all right so you ready blink your eyes just a little bit once they're rested find the middle of that circle and keep your eyes on it here we go one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, 30 and switch to that blank side. Whoa, what do you see now? You should see another circle, but the colors, look at that. You see kind of a yellow, a magenta, which is in the pink family, and what's called cyan, which is in the blue family, kind of a teal. Now they may be fading at this point and that's okay. But wow, let's talk about what's going on there. Why did that happen? Okay, my fellow scientists, so let's get to the why. This is the most important part of each and every experiment that we do, the reasons behind it. So I'm gonna need you to use your imagination for just a little bit. I need you to imagine that this is your eye. So this is like the side of it, we're looking this way, okay? This is where the light's gonna come in, and if you wanna know, that's the pupil. <laughs> it's gonna come back and hit the back part of your eye, and then it's gonna go through this nerve to your brain. And we'll get into the, the real details of the eye just today, we're just gonna talk about just the basics. Okay, so the light comes in, and then hits the back of your eye, and that's where it starts to go to the brain, right? Well, there's parts of your eye back here that pick up both shades, like black and white, as well as color, what we were just looking at. Well, the parts of your eye back here that pick up color are called cones, and they're called that because they kind of look like that, really, really small, but they look a little conish. And back there, you have three different types of 
cones back there. You have blue, you have green, and you have red. So really quick, I'm just going to put a few little marks back here. Now they're definitely not this big on your real eye, but you get the idea. No pun intended, that was really bad. <laughs> and you've got green, put caps down there for now, and you have blue back there as well. Okay, so we talked a little bit at the beginning of this week how light's gonna bounce off of something and it's gonna go to your eyes and go to your brain. Okay, so let's fast forward to the light actually bouncing off of something. It's going to be a certain color, right? So for example, if I was to see something red, I'm gonna make two, let's just say these are cherries. Maybe they've got stems. And usually their stems are not red, but we're just gonna pretend for today. Okay, so the light's gonna bounce off of those cherries, which are red, go into your eye, and then the red cones in the back are going to see that. That's their job. They're like, oh, that's red, I've got that. Okay, so if we stare at something red for a long time, just like any other part of your body, those cones start to get tired. We call that fatigue. <sighs> I'm tired, I've been working a long time. So then if we were to take our eye from that red thing, and then all of a sudden look at something white, well, those red cells are tuckered out. They're not gonna be working or not working as well. So that's when we start to see or think we start to see other colors because the green and the blues are still working. They're fine, they haven't been exercised a whole lot. So they're like, hey, I'm cool. So that's why we're gonna see those other colors. And believe it or not, the blue, the red, and the green are the only color cones that we need to see every single color that's out there. That's why when you saw your after image, you saw different colors than these. What we were doing is we were tiring out the blue, the red, and the green, depending on which part of that circle it was. So when we then shifted over to a white space, we saw an after image or what those cells could now do now that they were tired. So you saw your yellow, you saw your teal or your cyan, you saw your magenta, which is because those cells are now tired when you break. Now that image started to go away. And the reason is, is because all of a sudden those cells are starting to catch up again. Okay, we're functioning now. We can do what we are normally designed to do. And so it fades away and then you actually see what's really there, which is the white. All right, that was a whole lot of talking. So after all of this, and we kind of have an idea of how after images are made, let's go ahead and do two different experiments where we can make and kind of play with those after images, kind of tire out those different cells. So what you're gonna need for this is a bunch of markers and we are going to use our red our blue and our take a guess green probably you want to use the other colors and see what mix you could use that'll work out as well just remember out of those you may not uh, tucker out all of them if you use like a yellow because that's going to be ones that they work together on what else you're going to need are i have two index cards but if you have white paper, you have the inside of a recycled box. It can be anything. Anything that's white will work. Uh, make sure that if you're not using washable markers, it's something that won't bleed through onto the table. And let's go ahead now and play with these different cones to see what after images that we can make. So for our first drawing, we're going to start with something simple. And then we'll do a second one that may be a little bit harder than that, building on it. And then, of course, you're always welcome to push your artistic abilities and do another one after that. Uh, go ahead and share that with us. We'll go ahead and put some hashtags in later on to let you know where you can share. So the way this is going to work out is pretty similar to what we did uh, with the after image circle. I've got a white index card here and again like we talked about it anything that you've got that is of this lack of tone will work anything that's white will work out but just like that we're going to go ahead and have a picture on this side and then we're going to leave this side white so we'll look at this once we have our image drawn for 30 seconds and just like before i'll give you a timer so you don't have to worry about it and then after the 30 seconds, we'll switch and look to that white area and see what after image shows up. 
So you notice I already have two colors laid out here, and that's because I kind of have an idea of what I want to draw. I want to start with something that we probably have all tried before, and if you haven't, this is a great place to start. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and do a heart. So in remembering my circle, when I wanted colors like magenta, maybe some yellows, things like that, I wanted to tire out my green and my blue cones in order to get those other colors to show up. So that's why I have those two colors there. Uh, pro tip before we start, you're always welcome to do it along with me and to watch this one, but depending on what you're watching this video on, uh, whether it's your phone or your computer, it may not be as spectacular as if you're doing it in real life. So I highly recommend you have these materials and do them with you right now with me if you can. Okay, so I'm going to take these two colors out of the way for just a moment. And the middle of that heart, I'm going to want to tire out or fatigue my green cones. That way I hopefully get a pinkish. So I'm going to take a green and I'm just going to make a heart here. And then you're going to color that heart in. And you can see how I'm leaving that other side really, really wide open. I have plenty of space to move my vision in just a second over to this side. Okay, now I want an accent color for that. So I'm going to take blue. I'm going to put an outline around the outside of the heart because I want my blue cones to get fatigued there and see what color shows up. And if you don't remember your circle right now, what we saw first, that's okay. It's fun to experiment this way too. All right, my heart is done. So everybody find the middle of your heart about, okay? And remember, we wanna keep our eyes open if we can. So blink, 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 relax those eyes. Okay, now I'll give you 30 seconds, you ready? No, count out loud like it did before. Here we go. Stare at the middle of that heart and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and switch. Whoa! What do you see on yours? I saw a bright pink with a yellow outline on mine. What did you guys see? <laughs> And if you use different colors to try different uh, cones, that's perfectly okay. All right, so I'm going to take this down, put a new one up here, and this time I'm going to go ahead and use red and yellow. So if you remember, yellow wasn't in that circle when we first looked at it, but it may have been in the second image that we looked at, the after image, may have been in there. All right, so I'm going to make a clover. So I'm going to use that red in order to tire out my red cones in my eyes. And again, I'm going to draw over here, leave this open. So here we go. And this is kind of like a heart. <laughs> I'm not very good at four leaf clover, so I'm just going to go for three. Give it a little stem, okay? And make sure I color that in. And while I'm coloring this in, if your red isn't exactly the same color as my red, is that okay? Yeah. All right, there we go. And now for that accent. So just like the heart, I had a blue line for the outline of that. I'm going to do a yellow one for this guy.
but I want to see what color shows up. And I don't have cones that are yellow, but it still should fatigue some of them that work together to make that yellow. You may be able to predict what color we're going to see if you remember the after image circle. Okay, so same thing. Find the middle of your clover, again, approximately. Get a good look at that. And I'll give you your 30 seconds. I'll get my finger out of the way so you can see this one. Okay, ready? 30 seconds, and then we'll switch. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, and switch! Ooh, that one ended up cool too. What colors do you see? I've got green and kind of a, almost a blue indigo. Wow. All right, so now my fellow scientists, now that you know a little bit about a couple of them that you could try, I would love to see what you go ahead and try. And again, make sure that you have that white area to switch over to. So draw your image. Watch it for 30 seconds, then go over to something that is pure white and see what you see. All right, good job, scientists. Now you know about after images and how colors and your eye work together in order for you to see all the different colors that are around you. So we hope you had fun with colors this week with all of our different activities. Uh, hashtag below if you would show us what your after images look like. We would love to see them. We started off always with something simple, but always love to see what you do as well. Thank you very much for spending your time with us, and we hope that you are with us next week. We've got some really exciting things coming up, uh, so make sure you stick with us. So thank you again for tuning in to Science is Everywhere. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time, scientists. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching our virtual Purple Museums broadcast. If you're enjoying this content, please consider making a donation to support our efforts. Our broadcasts are every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Stay in the loop by joining our email list by visiting www.cdm.org. Sign up today.